everybody, my name is Kaya, and boy, do I have a story for you. Today, I'm going to be telling you a story about when I was a wee child, and I almost got snatched at my bus stop. No, this is not clickbait. This is a true story, unfortunately. And sit back, relax, get ready to listen to this craziness, because it's crazy. It's crazy. Where do we begin? I know you've probably heard it a thousand times that girls are naive but I would not like to blame that for today's topic of discussion. I totally was naive, but obviously that's not what's to blame, and this may be triggering for some people, so your discretion is advised. This is just me telling you a little bit about something that happened to me. I think I was in like fourth grade when this happened weirdo. This man was a weirdo. To paint the scenery, I lived in Fayetteville, North Carolina, which is a military town. I think it's the second largest military base in the United States. I lived in this big hill street. So there was a big hill and then there was a little middle section and then there was another big hill and it was all one street, right? My house was at the top of this hill over here. So it was kind of not at the very tippy top, but uh, a little bit towards the top. There's a road halfway up near the top that the bus could have taken, but instead they wanted me to walk all the way down to the bottom of this little hill. Does that sound smart to you or safe to you? No, it doesn't. This all took place at said bus stop, down here in the middle of these two hills, okay? I was in fourth grade, so my brother was in seventh grade or so, and he would always walk me to my bus stop, and uh, we woke up one morning, it was just a normal morning, you know, my mom worked night shift, she was a bartender, um, and she would go to college during the day so she tried to sleep between that little five or four hour window that she could you know so we would get ourselves ready go to school and my brother would walk me to the bus stop normal day we're walking down to the bus stop i remember i would look at the morning dew on the grass it was always so beautiful just seeing the little dew drops just chilling on the grass like the beach i'm like you so cute you know what i mean just walking down the street and we get to the bus stop and bam Across the bus stop, across the street, is this man just kind of chilling with this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful dog. At this point in the story, I'm only focused on the dog. I saw the dog and I was like, didn't keep my eyes off of it. Just the whole time I was just sitting there staring at the dog. And my brother was actually talking off of this man. Like this man was trying to talk to us and my brother was sitting there like barely talking to him, but like trying to talk to him so that he would stay away from us. You know what I mean? Like into the point where kind of like, off dude but he was pretty young so he didn't know how to do that just yet so we're just sitting there waiting for the bus and this man starts to approach us he starts getting all up, all up close to us walking across the street we're just like okay this is a bus stop like we're supposed to be sitting here what are you doing here dude like what are you you're walking your dog stay over there stay over there he kept talking to my brother and i believe he tried to talk to me a few times and my brother wouldn't let me respond he would actually interrupt me or whatever before i would start to talk he would not let me talk to this man and that was for good reason me i had no instincts whatsoever my brother his hair was standing up like like there was no tomorrow so my bus approaches right my school bus approaches and i know what you're thinking kaya why are you telling me this if you got on the bus because there's there's more to this story okay so listen the bus approaches and i get on the bus and I sit down and I'm like, okay, and I go to school and I get to class and I'm sitting there just doing what I do, chilling in fourth grade with Miss, I'm not gonna say her name, but I love you if, you if you're watching this, I love you. I'm just chilling there and I get a phone call. Ring, ring, ring. Well, it's not me, obviously, it's the school class gets a phone call. So on the wall in the school, ring, 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 gets a phone call. I'm like, okay, hey, somebody is going home. This school day just started, but somebody is going home. How cool. My teacher looks at me and she's like, Kaya, your mom's on the phone. And I was like, okay, and that's weird. My mom's sleeping. You know, that's, <laughs> that was my first thought. I was like, my mom is asleep. Why is my mom on the phone? So I walked through the phone and I was like, hey, mom. And she is crying. She is sitting there like, oh my God, are you okay? Kaya, what happened? You need to tell me everything. And I was just sitting there like, mom, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm just chilling. I'm at school. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, obviously those weren't my words, but I was totally relaxed. No idea what was going on. Blah, 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 blah. My mom came to get me. She was persistent about coming to get me. She would not take no for an answer. She needed to have us there this day. She said, and I quote, she woke up that morning right around the time pretty much that my bus stop came to come pick me up. And she had this feeling in her stomach where she felt like if she didn't get up at that moment that she 
she was never going to see her kids again. And oh my gosh, boy, was that feeling right. When I tell you your motherly instinct is always right, it's always right. Because my brother happened to jump in the bushes whenever I got onto the bus. So we're like, that guy thought that he was in on the bus, you know? And that guy was like looking for my brother. Like at that point, whenever I got on the bus, he was looking for my brother. Like, where did you go, buddy? How fucking creepy is that? My mom came down the hill and she, she was like calling out for my brother just because she looked at his bus stop, I guess, and he wasn't there. So she came back to my bus stop and he jumped out of the fucking bushes. Oh, my mom came to pick me up and that was just the whole debacle. That whole debacle was a long day. We just spent the whole day together. Right? I know what you're thinking. Kaya, this story, it's gotta be over, right? No, unfortunately it is not. So like after that, we, we contacted the school and kind of let them know a little bit about what was going on with this creepy guy. And they didn't really do anything. I remember I would get dropped off there and I had an hour before my brother got off of school before he got home. So I had an hour of being alone at like during the daytime because my mom was at college. So long story short, he would kind of like be there across the street and I would have to walk up that big hill, like we said. And I just remember some days I would just run up that fucking hill because he would just be there on the other side of the street, just like following me up the hill. One day, I remember after we talked to the school about that, they eventually started letting us get dropped off at my house because it's too dangerous. Okay, look at me. I'm a pretty little girl. You can't just be, well, I'm not a little girl anymore, but I was a pretty little girl, okay? You can't just be letting me all alone. Danger, danger, okay? Stranger danger, bitch. That was a stranger. They were letting me in danger, okay? So I started getting dropped off at my house, right? Well, that did not stop this guy, okay? That did not stop this guy. This guy was persistent. I remember, so every single time I would get home I would have to go in through the back door because that's the key that I had you know but my mom eventually got me the key to the front door because there were two different keys it was a really old house a beautiful house it was three stories there were suicide doors on the top and the third floor like okay <laughs> but I got home from school one day and I went into the front door and I locked the door behind me right and I go into the sunroom and all I hear is the door behind me just start you know, you know that sound? It was like an old house doorknob where like, it's old, you know, and like there's no lock on it. So it's like literally like, Ugh. it's the creepiest moment in my life was walking into the door and going into the sunroom, closing the sunroom door behind me. So at that point I'm in the living room and all I hear is that door start to try to open. And I'm like, is my brother home early? No, it's that fucking man staring at me through the fucking sunroom door, front door, through the sunroom door, into me through the living room. I can see him through the living room. He's standing outside the front door just staring at me. And I just freaked the fuck out. I called my mom. I let her know what the fuck was going on. She was at work at that point and she, nope, that did not fly on her watch. Her manager at the time, I'm not going to disclose his name, but it's actually my aunt's brother. So thank you so much for doing this for me. But he actually came and checked the house out, scoped the house out, like checked around the outside and stuff. He got there like five minutes after I called them because my mom worked right down the road. But long story short, they didn't, he didn't come around much after that. That was pretty much the last, the last time I saw that guy. And yeah, we, we got, we got a pit bull after that. And I don't think, I think that's probably why he stopped mess, messing with us. Cause Juno, man, <laughs> I'll have to show you guys Juno. We'll have to go visit my brother where Juno is because she is a feisty mama. That's Percy's mom. And yeah, no, nobody would ever dare to break into our house. Let me just tell you that. <laughs> The point of me telling you this story was not to like scare you or anything. There was um, apparently a halfway house that was on that street that they recently like built and blah, 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 blah. They were just trying to get people out and better, but there was like four people that mess with kids that lived in that house. So it's kind of messed up that they didn't tell people in the neighborhood, especially th there's a lot of kids in that neighborhood. They definitely picked the wrong one, but it was kind of an eye-opening experience, you know? I definitely learned to not be so naive. And the point of this is to kind of just let you know, always keep your guard up. Always be on the lookout for some weird, weird shit. Because let me tell you, you cannot trust anybody. I was focused on the dog. My brother was focused on that guy and his body language. He could tell by the way he was looking at us that he was not just looking at us. You know what I mean? 
I hope you guys enjoyed today's story time video. I have only ever done one other story time on my channel, which I will actually be redoing because I did it like five or so years ago, but <laughs> that's besides the point. If you guys enjoyed, you guys know what to do. I appreciate you guys for sticking around till the end. If you liked this story or if you think that somebody needs to hear this story, feel free to share this story with somebody naive. I'm kidding. <laughs> Thank you guys again for watching. Stay rad, you guys. Don't get abducted by aliens because that doesn't sound like fun. And you guys, have an amazing day.